Hi there, my name is Doug Jackson and today I'm going to be showing you some of my line and wash artwork. I'm going to be doing a really simple little drawing of a boat, uh, first putting in some lines and then applying some paint. I'll talk you through the technique as we go, I'll try and keep this one really simple just so you get an idea of uh, the technique that I use for most of my art and um, please feel free to comment and like and subscribe. So, as you can see from some of these pages, I do like my line and wash technique. Um, it's great for quick sketching. You can get some colour down, you can get some shaping. Um, sometimes you can be quite accurate and put in quite a lot of detail. Um, such as this one here, where you have, technically I suppose it's quite dense, uh, using small brushes, dots and other times you can be a bit more slapdash and lay it on and just have a bit of a play um so yeah this is uh, a sketchbook with various bits of bobs in some of my boat sketches some challenges um some urban sketching again a bit more rough and ready um this is about a sketch I did recently which i quite like the style of the squirrely lines and there's a lot of interesting wet in wet technique and blooms and dots of colour. One thing that surprised me about this is I went in with some quite strong pigment here but as you can see when it's dried it's actually gone quite subtle which just goes to show that you you can actually be quite um you can actually be quite rough in the way that you apply uh paint, particularly wet in wet and it does diffuse anyway. So plan is today is to do something like this. So this kind of really simple boat sketch with a little bit of reflection in the background, you can see small elements of pontoons and ropes and things just to add detail, scale, context, etc. So we're going to do we're going to do this sketch now. I don't I know that you can do some clever picture in picture things and have like the original there, but I'll try and do that. Um, but I will say that the. There will be a link to this in the description below, which will link to maybe my website and I'll have that original picture up there along with this tutorial video so you can sort of dual screen it if you follow the link to my website. Anyway, let's get cracked on, shall we? Um, okay, here we go. So I'm going to need two things here, obviously prepared, not in the slightest. Uh, let's go with a pencil. Um, Let's see if we can go with a fountain pen. Ooh, I'll drop that on the floor. I'll leave it there. Um, so then, yeah, what do we do? Do we go straight in with a pen? Um, do we go straight in with a pencil? It's really up to you. In this case, I'm going to use a pencil because I think a lot of people initially don't feel confident going straight in with pen. So we'll do a really rough sketch in pencil um, just to get the proportions, and then I'll do a quick sketch on top of that some of this i might speed up just because it's probably not that interesting for you to sit here listening to me heavy breathing while i'm doing all that so here we go some people uh, when they're planning out drawings they'll start from the outside and go in i just start where i want because i i, I don't like to think too much about my art because i think in a way it feels a bit like work then and I like it to be an escape from rules and life and all those things. So I am just sketching along the gunnels of the boat, which are the edges, to the transom. There is normally a relationship you have on a boat in terms of its perspective, and that will go from the bow, the pointy bit, uh, stem post, the back, to the transom, which is the normally the flat bit at the back. And sometimes if you can sketch that in, it can give you a sense of the geometry of a boat. So say for example here, they meant that length wants to be roughly half and half there. So you know to pull that out just a little bit. There's loads of little things that as you do more sketching. And also you see that line there, that should be roughly parallel with that one which again, I'm probably just doing too much line work here, but so there you go. It's a bit more of an accurate line. One of the things that annoys me about sketching initially with pencil is I tend to overwork the pencil and it, it gets mushy and I can't be bothered to go in and then rub it out again. Um, whereas at least if you just commit to pen, you've got your line. Um, anyway. 
So you may notice that I'm sketching a lot here with the back of the pen. It really helps you to create soft arcs and lines. If you go like this, what you'll create is wiggly little lines. Now I don't mind that sometimes, and some people sketch that way and it's beautiful, but when you're sketching out the sort of almost feminine forms of a boat, it, it helps to, to hold your pen, pencil or pen this way and then you get straighter lines anyway. So this line here is a water, is almost a water line. So if you drew a line from there to there and then connected the bow in, you'd get a straight line along the water. So that's quite a useful reference, that line there. But it does come out like this and then come in that side. Now there is a sort of plimsoll line on this boat. In other words, it's got a bit of colour that comes up like that now that you don't have to put the two colors in here you see here you have a sort of what a cream boot top sort of and then a white almost i don't know what you call that but like a plimsoll line i'd say it is but it's that's useful to draw in because it helps to describe the form of the hull and now obviously we're going to be putting paint on and lines on but anything you can do sometimes just to hint at something to give you a a bit more of a helping hand can work really well so I'm going to leave that line on there and again there's those parallel lines that should really mimic across there right so we're not far off actually that being done um, again when you're putting these fenders in these are the bumpers that stop the boats crashing together there's a tiny little bit of rope that goes across the flat of the gunnel and then down the other side and if you can get that little bit of detail in all that will do is just tell the tale of all that form so blenders basically plastic sausages there's a phrase i thought i'd never say on youtube um there you go The bottom of those are just to say in the water, which you can't really see there, but when you put the reflection on, you'll see that the other way. Ah, now reflection. As you see in this image, what we have here is we, we have a reflection. It would be tempted to go around and draw that pencil line in, but I don't want to do that because I want to keep the reflection quite loose. So I'm just going to paint that in raw. Um, so the only other thing I need to line in is some of this detail now you know when you put all the ropes on i would just put one on from that cleat there and then that one coming in because that sort of tells that story and i'd maybe put one on on the back because i quite like that maybe a hint of a fender there that pontoon is quite nice and then a couple of more abstract lines i'd be tempted to miss off all these bobbins here i don't know they just don't don't do a lot for me but anyway i'll, I'll have a crack so i'll get finished with the pencil work i might speed up a bit now Actually, I will say something. You might see here that I'm putting, when I'm doing these lines, what I'm doing is I'm putting my little pinky finger here on the edge of the page. And then what I'm doing is I'm reaching in like this and then going backwards and forwards. And that enables you, if you've ever done any joinery, this is a classic carpentry tip, to get some quick lines, which are very roughly parallel. And of course you could do the same here, but that's the wrong angle because all this is coming in sort of that angle again a little oh, going off the page here a little bit on the bottom helps describe that form and then there's two bolt heads there okay i would force a bit of perspective into this just to make it a bit smaller coming bigger and i think again that helps just to tell the story of the form just to exaggerate that a bit i mean it wouldn't be that that small really but anything you can do just to help tell the tale i think works so we're assuming the planks on this one are going to be smaller than the planks on the other side 
just to give it a, a slightly different texture anyway just to demark demarcate the fact that it's a different thing and as you get closer to the foreground make the gaps a bit wider and again it leads your eyes visually suggesting that it's big in the foreground and small in the background that is just bodged in it's really roughly done but you don't have it doesn't have to be spot on one of the things i've noticed about this boat is because i put that center line in what i've effectively done is i've created a line from there to about there so what so now we need to put in some lines to show the fact that the boat if viewed from the side the bow would be higher than the stern anyway you'll see when i do it i can lay that in there so this line has to come up basically if we put a vertical line in that's the inside of the bow there uh, I might go into the technical aspects of these kind of drawings at a later date, but I just think for now I'm really feeling my feet and getting my confidence up by just trying to do something like a tutorial because it's not something I've ever done before. So I think I'll probably learn more from this from you. And in all honesty, I'll probably view it more times than it gets viewed by any of you lot. So not that I'm vain. It's just that I want, I want to see if it's any good or not anyway so i'm going to put in that seat at the front that helps tell all these lines that line there that line there these lines that come in of the planks of the boat the seat or thwart as it's referred to in naval parlance um, all these things help actually tell the story of the form even that little line there will go in just to, again just to help tell that story so we'll come down there uh, right so that's the center of the what put in and i'll put that one in there even though you can't see it it's hinting at it so that little vertical line there that's important but that's at an angle because it shows that that part of the hole will be leaning out slightly so then let's put these lines in. Don't have to be hyper accurate with this. See, instinctively here, I want to turn the book around because this isn't a really comfortable angle for me to draw at, but I'm aware that turning the book and the phone at the same time is not really, <laughs> really going to work. Anyway, so there we go. Now let's put that with a fender in, which is again dangling in the water around that side. And then we've got uh, a line coming off this side to a cleat here. I tend to draw like little squares just to denote the rope being wrapped around. I quite like the more stylized feel of it than trying to do something too kind of accurate. So again here, oh, I screwed that up, anyway, right there. And again, if you can get that form in, that's going to help to tell the story of the shape of the boat. Something like that. I don't want to be too specific about this. Grand, so the only bit that's missing is the sort of side of the key or pontoon here. Now I'm just going to make this slightly different than it is in the drawing because I want to try and give you the idea that it's big blocks of old wood rather than the image which is quite it's not quite that interesting really. So I'm going to put a little bit of sort of texture on that. Maybe do the same there. Artistic license. I love it. Right, so that goes there, and then we've got a sort of bumper that goes along there. Again, backgrounds, you can be quite abstract, but you might want to just break it up to try and show there is different textures and there's different things going on. I might close that off there. Right. So that's probably it for the sketch. For the pencil work, anyway. Um, so now, oh, questions. Do we go fountain pen um, or fine liner 
or do we go grey fine liner or oh god there's an, any number of choices here now at some point i will talk about the difference between inks and waterproof inks and non-waterproof inks but you know for this occasion i am just going to keep it simple and use one of my favorite pens which is this opus 88 fountain pen right so where do i start with my lines Normally, one of the easiest things to do is start with the foreground and work back because normally the stuff that's in the foreground will lay over the top of the background. I know that sounds stupid, but if you had a person stood in front of a load of trees and you did all the trees, you can't rub out the bit where the person is. So then when you, the person would have to be over the top of the trees. So if you start with the person in front of the trees, then you can do the trees behind them. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, generally start with stuff that's nearest to you and work backwards. So I can start here with this boat's transom. So we're going to go over these lines here. Thus. Now I've got to make sure that I leave that line there. So I'll stick those fenders in. Because then I won't go over the top of them. And now there is on this boat. You might notice I'm holding the pen slightly more at the front for a a bit more control right so there's that line that comes over that side and down there So this little sketchbook is is a super cheap Arteza sketchbook and I started using these when I got back into my sketching and drawing and uh, I quite like the fact that it's rough on one side and you get smooth paper on the other so every, every paper, every page is a little bit different um, but they're cheap and a good friend of mine, Brian Ramsey, who is one of my art inspirations really he uh he said to me once and i always remember he said it's just paper and and i think that's the thing is if you get to see i've screwed up there put that line in and it should be higher there you go so what i'll do is i'll drop another one in the other side and then it doesn't look quite as much of a mistake so yeah it's only paper we put so much pressure on ourselves in our lives to perform a certain way, we compare ourselves to other people, and art is such a wonderful opportunity to forget all that, just create something for the sake of creating. Now, I'm not going to torture you with the drum and bass that I'm listening to while I'm doing this, <laughs> but I, that's what I do, is when I'm making art, I just put music on, and I don't compare myself to anyone I'll try to. Uh, I don't always see it like an idiot whispering to the camera like Bob Ross, but I am very aware that the microphone is right in front of me. Sorry, things just jumped around. I've just had to answer a phone call. And I've done stop for that all the time. So this is weird because I don't like that line there. Normally I'd have to turn the paper around, so I'm going to have to just go a bit slow for that one. Not brilliant, but ho oh, oh. Right, so, so there is some holes in the gunnel that run around here, and I'm going to put those in because I think it helps to tell the sort of story a bit, and it also is a good way of showing form again you could measure this symmetrically over both sides but life is very short and what we're doing here is trying to encourage you to have a go and not worry too much so there you go so then in here we have the inside of the stem post the lines of the hole that run round now this is a carvel hole, so it's smooth on the inside, but sometimes there are vertical pikes that go down inside the framework that go inside 
the hole, which really helped to tell the story again. Sometimes I'd, I'd put them in just because, again, it looks right. But here, yeah, I'm not going to do that. So we're getting there with the boat, and then this is the hole coming around here. Now, all of this is almost above the water, and then you'd see the water line there. That's the colour change. Fenders. And there you go. Again, quite abstract, not really worried too much about the specifics. So what I'm going to do here then, is that still running? Oh, I'd say so is I'm going to blast all the background in. So you'll see some of this is quite rough. Uh, I'm really not going to be too fussy about it. In fact, I might put in a little bit of texture as I go. Um, that way, It helps sort of tell the story a little bit, right? That's probably a bit bodgy, but no matter. Again, it's meant like that. See, what you're doing is you're making your own mind up about what these textures are. It might be bits of wood that have got bits missing, old bits of wood. So where I've brought those lines along, what you can actually do is separate them like this and then here so I'm drawing in the ends of those lines and I'll use those to create the planking so now I won't put any details in with the stuff that's that far back I am trying not to think about this when I do it I'm just whacking them in Now a bit closer, I'll start to put a little bit of form into them. And then as I get closer still, they become a shape like uh, Right, so that sort of shows that. Now we've got that bit under here. So this looks like a little bit of like rubber, rubbing strike. So we'll just leave that a little bit blank. I might just put a little dots in there as if it was Excuse me. Right, so that's that vaguely done. And then back here we've got adding just trying to break up this pontoon with some again some more textures. And then even just suggest what's happening there before We'll maybe put some cleats in. And then that's the top. Now I don't might just leave that completely blank. Don't, the main bit of the drawing is all in here. You can paint as much as you want, you can leave it as blank as you want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let that dry, hair dryer or not hair dryer. Um, I might just pause it for a second, make myself a brew. There's Mr. Rubber, he's going to come back and clean up this mess. Okay, so you can see here that I've missed a few lines, which is not unusual for me. So, we have to put something in here. I'm 
also, if that goes down into the bottom of the boat, we'll pretend that there's something going on there too. See, if you put, were to put those vertical lines, I might put them in. Do you know I might put them in? I know they're not actually in there, but that framing really helps to show what the inside of the boat looks like. This is naughty. Right. See, these will come closer together as you come round. No, uh... There you go. Anywhere. Maybe that was a daft idea. Don't know. But it helps to show the shape of things. So what we're going to do now is start thinking about how I'm going to put paint on. So I could just splotch them up there and put on an overall tone for the reflection of the sky. Um, the sort of lightest background colour is this blue, which is in which is a sort of very pale sky colour. So now it would be nice to be that subtle, but nee, not really me. So we might mix some blue and put that down as a flat colour. The only thing I'm going to have to be careful to leave is the cream and the fenders um, because that's lighter than the blue so covering that blue is going to be a bit hard so what I'll do is I'll think about where where that cream is and where the fender is it's all within the shape of that hole really I could maybe draw that in I could pencil that in you know right I'll do that and that'll give me a sense of where not to put colour So what I might do is put in that cream first. That's a good idea. So if I put that cream in first, I said I wasn't going to use pencil here. This is I can't call this a tutorial. This is just messing about, isn't it? Right, there's the boat. So I'm going to put the cream in on the hull, cream in on the water, and then I'm going to go from there because that's the lightest thing in the whole picture. So paint, I need paints. Right, so what we've got here, we've got some uh, Dan Smith watercolours. We've got a little palette for mixing stuff in. If this is a bit not right colours, we've got some council pop or wesh, as it's referred to in Yorkshire, i.e. water, a brush. Right, so... Looking at the drawing again, we've got this yellow to put in first, and then maybe maybe put the orange in. Or then anyway, the blue maybe top and bottom. So let's crack on. Um, so I'm going to use a bit of this yellowy one. I don't know whether that's yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. There you go. It's very pale, and then bush straight in. As you can see, I am not painting between the lines accurately. I am not even bothering to be. There you go. One of the things I always forget when I paint is tissue, where you can dry a brush and lift out a little bit of ink. Yeah, watercolor, so it doesn't pull right. So, tiny bit of that in the hole here. And what I might do is I might just use, again, holding the brush right at the end, drying it off a bit. And I just might be really, really inaccurate about that. I really don't want this to be a masked class. In painting technique I want it just to be a bit of fun so we'll put that in there now this side of the hull and this side of the hull are quite a bit darker so I'm going to use a bit of Van Dyke Brown or some of the dark ones really do forgive me for get these names wrong um, and then I might even put a little bit on there just wet and wet again to Right, there you go. So we're literally leaving that at that. And then I'm going to get a bit of what I would call 
orange on the go, which is a bit mixture of yellow and again a mixture of red. And I'm really sorry, I can't remember the names. Um, I will try and get a crib sheet sorted for all that sort of stuff. Problem is, is like a lot of the thing, the way that I learn and the way, the way a lot of people learn is it's not rote learning because I don't have the brain that works well. Um, so I tend to learn the, the names of things so that I can buy the right thing. But after that, it's just the yellow one or the orange one. Uh, I really do admire people who whose brains work in a more efficient way than mine. So you may have noticed that what's happened here is because I've got it with that colour. It's run into the other one, which isn't ideal because there is actually some separation between the colour of the hull and the colour of the boat. Now sometimes I just leave that because I like it. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to dab the paint out of the hull. That's quite a light part of the hull. It doesn't matter. And I'll do the same here. And that will dry the paper up and stops the two uh, paints running together. So the next bit is some blue. Now I've got some French ultramarine, not the granulated stuff, the fine stuff here. And I might mix that with a bit of cobalt. Um, is that cobalt again? Terrible. Shocking. Okay. So, I want to put a bit of colour here, because I want it to look like this pontoon is in the middle, but I don't, what you could do is you could put some stripes, diagonal lines like that, to draw your line into the middle. You could do some um, vertical lines, because obviously you're going to have some vertical reflections here. You could just do a few stripes, like odd random stripes. You could even um, put in a lot of water and just drop a couple of bits of paint in and see what happens. Yeah, should we do that? That sounds like far more fun than doing anything else logical, doesn't it? So I'm going to just put some random bits in here. Like that and there. And I might even make a few splashes. And then with this cobalt blue. Like that. Not cobalt. I can just go poof. Poof, poof, poof. Now here, because I want the ink to come down to the edge, what I might do is actually just paint that down. Try and leave some of the, the details. And again, just... Whoosh, some swirly lines. I like splatters in pictures. So again, this is quite abstract. I, I'm kind of doing this just to show that you really don't have to paint by... <coughs> uh, colour by numbers. You know, you don't have to have this is the blue bit, this is the whatever. I mean, actually, if you wanted to show that there were some buildings back there, you could wait for that to dry and just put some brown lines in. I might do that in a bit. Anyway, I want that to just dry up a bit first because there's some nice pools of paint and I don't want to lose that sort of texture. So with that same blue mixed, or a little bit of a similar blue mixed, I'm going to come in and do the water. So there's some reflections from something at the other side, but I don't know what that is, but I can just sort of synthesise that almost. As you get closer to the camera painter, the lines, the waves get bigger because of perspective. So everything back here is much closer together. You could even use a smaller brush if you wanted to do a real proper job. Okay, so I'm going to try and leave a few bits of white in the water. This sort of technique works or it doesn't. Um, sometimes what can look right to one person doesn't look right to someone else. Uh, but I tend to think that the best thing to do is to get some scrap bits of paper and just play. 
spend 10 minutes a night for a few nights just doing some sort of wave details and you're going to get something that you like and it, the nice thing about doing, about doing it that way as opposed to just trying to replicate what other people have done even i'm not saying that that's not useful because that's the way i do most of my learning but um is you can sort of try and develop a little bit of your own language so i'm again i'm not thinking too much here i'm just gonna kind of mess this side up a bit but oops splash the camera now this obviously is gonna gonna be quite poppy quite bluey but you'll be surprised when it dries it will fade back a bit but I mean I also like bold colors so So now it's a waiting game or a hairdryer game. Right, so that wasn't the best hairdryer experience. I managed to get uh, watercolour in all the rest of my pad. But this is the thing I was saying before about not being too fussy about your art. Just roll with it. No one gets hurt, it's only paper. Brian, I will trademark that and you will hate me. Right. So I'm going to put some some more muted, slightly more muted colours in for the pontoon. But I'd, instead of, I'd like to keep the colour in the boat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a grey. So to do that, I am going to take the blue that I've already mixed here and drop in some Van Dyke Brown. I always try and mix my own greys, um, particularly if they're subtle. I normally have blue on the go anyway. So, uh, so I'll go for some really simple grey. Now I might just do like a drag across here, a sort of slightly dry brush technique. So I'm going to get a bit of water out of this brush, some water here, and then I'm going to drag that across. It's too dry. And you see, I don't know if you can see it's quite subtle. You have a slightly broken, broken line there. Quite like that, quite simple. Right. Um... Right, I'm going to do, mix up some slightly darker and then bring that in here. Try not to cover the bow in grey paint. There's a dark line there and that's it. And then I'll probably bring that down here. Now I shouldn't have brought that blue up to the edge because there's the shadow of the key in there. Rocky error. Right. Now what you could do here is you could do some thin lines to suggest shadows in between some of these planks particularly as you get further forward again when this dries it'll be a lot lot uh, fainter okay and then I'll put, I might just put a, a, a pale uh, palish wash over that bit later on I don't really want to leave it quite that white in fact I might do that now um, and then, oh, it's probably a bit dark, but anyway. I can come in and put more shadow on that in a bit. Right. So. I'm trying to lift stuff out here. So we've got a dark blue. We've got the blue of the hull then. So well, that's a little bit of my turquoise. And a little bit of cobalt, I think. I wish I knew what these colours were called. It'd be really useful. So I'm going to go in and put the whole colour in. This isn't a very transparent colour, actually. Maybe something more transparent would have been good. But Alright. 
Let's try it. I might lift a bit of that out because it's actually a little bit too thick. And I want to see some of the lines in there. Right, so then, again, I, I'm sort of keep looking at the picture occasionally just to, just to help jog my memory. Uh, I think that's wrong. I think that needs to be... And then that's here. And this is a lot darker. When we come back in, we'll have to put some shadows in this bit here where everything goes back under the wall, under the boat. Uh, but again, try not to be too... Too bothered by that. There's a few places here where I might put a bit of white pen because I've painted over stuff I shouldn't have done. Some naughty. Right. Half the things I've learned from watching other artists work is actually how to troubleshoot, particularly towards the end of a, a picture, when you've made decisions which haven't necessarily been the right ones. Um, right. You see, just putting that in makes you realise where the water level is on that fender. It just sort of delineates that. And once you've done the same with that one and this one round here in white, which obviously I'm going to have to use the <coughs> a gel pen for. Anyway. So just to complicate things, this is a slightly different blue in the bow. You may have noticed that I am using one brush for all this. I am a really big fan of big brushes, but something like this, where it's got a pointy tip, but you can hold quite a lot of water in it. It's great for very wet Photoshop. Photoshop? What's it called? <laughs> one of the things, as you can see, this is all AI. Um, one of the, the things that um, I, like to, uh, anyway, I like to keep sketching simple, and a million brushes, a big palette of, Paints and the million pens is 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 all very well, but at the end of the day, you, it's nice just to keep things super super simple and make it about the process rather than the equipment. So right, and I'm going to go back in and put a bit more dark under here. So what I'm going to do really now is start to build up just a few layers. Add in a little bit of shadow here and there. I'll just pull a bit of that out because it's puddling, and it'll take ages to dry. Okay, so that's the bare bones of it, really. Um, when it comes to making some decisions about where the shadows are going to be, I think we're going to have the light sources coming from where the rubber is. So what I'm going to have to try and do is get some shadow in here, shadow under the thwart, the seat, and shadow on this side. There isn't a lot of shadow in the, the actual reference image, and also some shadow from the boat going onto the key here. But if you choose a slightly stronger side light, it really helps to describe the form. So what I'm gonna do is quickly hair dry this. It's like being in the salon here. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna go put some of those shadows in. Okay, so don't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna put in some small lines into the fenders. Having that as no lines is a bit incongruous, but I don't wanna draw them all in likewise for the transom so i'm going to put in just some sort of leading lines uh, just a sort of suggestion like that this will kind of make sense in a bit maybe it will maybe it won't right shadows so firstly in the boat i'm gonna go with some Uh, right, you'll have to forgive me if there's a bit of meal prep going on in the background. It's almost that time. So, that is far, far too wet. So I'm going to again lift a bit of that out. 
I'll use that in here. And then that's the shadow under the thwart amidships. I know it's hilarious, isn't it? Ski words. Uh, now you could even go darker with these because, as I say, when it you want it to pop, and when it dries, it will be a lot lighter. So like actually a little shadow under that four C as well. There would also be a little shadow around here, maybe. Even on the backs of these frames. Don't have to put these in. Right, not something like that. I'm just going to put in quickly just some slight bits of texture back here. See, I shouldn't have put blue there. Oh, um, dog's bomb. I'm going to mix up a bit more grey blue. And a bit more blue in there. Now I want this to be quite thick because I want the shadow under here to be pretty dark. And I'm going to also put in the reflection on the water. So again, starting with a bit less paint on this brush. There we go. And that's going to go in the dry lighter. And again with the same shadow colour, I'm just going to go under here and drop that in there and also the shadow is darker. So I'm just going to put that, that's probably not right technically, but it gives a flavour, dry a bit of that out, it's not quite right. Anyway, again I'm trying not to be too precious about this, so we're probably not far off there I think. I want to keep it fresh, I want to keep it quite light and don't want to overwork it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there, I'm going to dry it, put the highlights on, do a tiny bit more line work and then we're done. Right, I'm going to pull up out a little bit of this, I think this is a bit heavy in here. So I'm going to use some water, and lift it out. Like that. So I don't want the eye to go straight there. I want the eye to go to the boat. See how that works. There we go. Better. Okay, so now I'm going to get my white gel pen and correct some of these slightly dodgy mistakes that I made.
Right, the final touches. After the white is I will just use some slightly heavier lines on the bits of the boat I want to pull forward. And this is where I do try and be a bit careful. Don't know why there's a bit of blue there, no mind. I think I've kind of done that. Right, there's bits and bobs I could do to that, but it would be sort of rolling it in glitter, so to speak. I think that's the essence of it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I've covered a few real basic techniques about stuff. Um, as you can see, it's more of a watercolour sketch than anything, but... Uh, that's often what I have the time for or enjoy doing because, oh, hold on, there's always another bit, bit of grey fine liner. And there's stuff you could do like put the shadow of the boat on the key and shadow of the rope. Oh, that's loud. You could go on and do more stuff. But anyway, I'm leaving it. I'm done. So. I'll hopefully do another one soon, and then I might even start getting some proper camera gear out, which is kind of what I do for a job, and do some proper videos. But at the moment, I'm quite enjoying just the sort of relaxed, uh, slightly um, impromptu way of doing this. Okay, there you go. Uh, please comment, um, subscribe, uh, abuse, whatever. Um, be nice to think there's somebody out there who can get something from this. I've just spotted another thing. And another thing. Here we go. Oh, stop it. Right, I'm definitely done. I'm going. It's time for me tea. Night, night.